This video is going to be on setting up and running cron jobs, also known as job schedulers or task schedulers. Cron tabs allow you to actually run certain commands or scripts that you make every minute, hourly, daily, monthly, or on specific days of the week. Now, the, for cron tabs to work, it assumes that your computer has to be on. So your computer can't be off or else the cron tabs won't actually run as scheduled. So if your cron tab is scheduled for, let's say, five, at 5 in the morning, and your computer is off at 5, but you turn it on at 6, the cron job from 5 in the morning will not run. Now, you can actually set system-wide cron jobs where it'll run based on the system, or you can set user-specific cron tabs. Now, all of the, a list of all the crons for each of the users would be listed in the var spool cron directory so ls to var spool cron now in order to view the contents of this directory you must be root notice we're logged in as root right now but we have no crons on the system so that's why it shows empty so let's go ahead and make sure that our cron our cron daemon is actually running so we're going to go to ps dash aux we're going to pipe that over to grep and we're going to grep uh, for cron. And you'll see that we have our cron D process running. Now this process runs every minute, checking for new crons within that folder or within the system-wide file. Now to set a system-wide cron, we would just need to edit the Etsy cron tab file. So let's go ahead and do vi Etsy cron tab. Now notice how it also gives you a breakdown of the different parameters that you can use as far as time. So in order to set a cron here, all we would have to do is define each of these units of time, followed by the username that we want to apply this cron to, followed by the command or script that we're trying to run. So let's go ahead and try, try to set up a cron tab here. So we're going to go into insert mode and let's put a comment so you can put a comment by adding a pound symbol at the beginning of your line and we'll say testing crons now in your system you might want to be a little more descriptive of what those crons are and it's always good form to actually set comments in your in your crons or scripts or whatever you're actually developing or making changes to so let's go ahead and create a cron as the root user. So we'll go ahead and start by defining each of these units of time. First is the minute. Now we can say from 0 to 59, which would give you the 60 minutes for the hour. Now you would just do that by defining the minute. And then you'd space, define the hour, space, define the month, the day of the month, then the month, and then the day of the week. Now you could also use a wild card or asterisk which would allow it to run every minute or every hour depending on where you put the asterisk. So let's go ahead and do every minute of every hour for every day of the month, for every month, for every day of the week. So we put an asterisk for each of those time each of those units of time. And now we need to follow it by a username. So let's go ahead and just say it's for root. And let's go ahead and supply it the command so now one thing you need to know is you don't always have to but you, it's a good habit to define the full pass of the command so let's go ahead and press the escape key we're gonna type colon explanation point so also people call it bang or shebang and then let's go ahead and follow by which and let's use the uptime command so which uptime? So you'll see it's located in the user bin uptime. Now what I did here was I was able to stay within my Vim program and run an actual Linux command that will give me the path to the specified application or utility that I requested. So let's go ahead and press enter. So I'm back in Vim. So just so you guys see that again, I pressed escape, colon, the bang symbol. Then I type the command that I want to run, which is which, and then uptime, and then it gives me the directory path right here. 
of user bin uptime. So let's go ahead and copy that. We're going to put a space here. Oh, let's get back in insert mode. Put space and paste that in. So now we're running uptime and we're going to go ahead and do a append redirection and add it into the root directory for uptime. Let's do system wide. Txt. I'm going to exit this, save it, and now that we did that, our cron is going to run every minute. So let's just do ls. You'll see that we currently do not have a file here. Run the date utility, and you'll see if you give it about another 45 seconds, we should have a file automatically created. Now, if we want to watch that date command, let's say real time, we can use the watch utility followed by n for a number of seconds, let's say one second, followed by the command you want to run. And you'll see here that it actually shows us every second what's happening with this command. Just a useful utility for you to use when you're, uh, let's say you're trying to time things out or see what's happening real time to a command. Okay, it's almost ready. We should almost have our first file with our line. Let's go ahead and check. So I did control C, got out of that. Let's do ls. And now you see that we have an uptime systemwide.txt. Let's do ls-l. And that way you could see the timestamp. It was created at 7.20 a.m. my time. Let's go ahead and cap the contents of that. And you'll see that it actually wrote the time. So the cron actually ran at 7.20 at the two second mark. We had two users logged in at the moment with a load average. So let's go ahead and go back to our, let's just let it run actually one more time so you can see how it appends, appends the uptime every minute. All right, give it another couple seconds. One more second and then it should run. All right. Let's go ahead and cut the contents. You'll notice that the actual size of the file changed. We had 63 bytes up here, but now we have 126 bytes. So that means we actually wrote something to this file. And you'll see that we have our second line added to the file, which it ran at 7:21 in the morning. And it shows how many users we currently have logged in as well as our load average at that time. So let's go back into the VI Etsy cron. Oops, sorry about that. VI Etsy cron tab. And let's go down to the line that we made. I'm going to go ahead and comment that out for now. And let's go ahead and create user-specific crons. So now, to, in order to create the user-specific cron, Linux has provided a utility called crontab. Now, if you type crontab by itself, it won't do anything. It's expecting a command. So let's do crontab dash hash help. And you'll see it gives you the available options that you can use. We have the dash e, which we use to edit the crontabs dash L, which we would use to list our current cron tabs, dash R if we wanted to delete cron tabs, or dash and, da and then we would ash add the dash I in order to prompt the user before deleting the cron tab. So you would use the dash R and dash I simultaneously. And then we'd also have the dash S, which is for SE Linux. So let's go ahead and check to see if us as the current user root have any uh, cron tabs enabled. So we could do cron tab dash L. Not supplying a U. Now you could also supply a dash U. So cron tab dash U. And we could say root dash L. And that would define the actual user. So whenever you do cron tab dash L, it would just show you the list of crons for the user that you're currently logged in as. But when you supply the cron tab dash U and then define the actual username followed by the dash L, it would show you the list of crons for that particular user. 
Now in order to use the dash u option you would need to be logged in as root so that you can access everybody's cron tabs. So let's go ahead and create a cron tab under u, under the root user. So cron tab dash u and we'll just say root dash e. So we're going to be editing our cron tab table. So it puts us into the cron tab file. Let's go into insert mode. And just like before, we would start with the units of time. So we do, I'm going to do asterisk for every minute of the day, for every minute of every hour. So the second column is always the hour. For every day of the month, for every month, for every day of the week. And then we can also, let's just do the same uptime command. So I'm going to go ahead and just bang which uptime. So user bin uptime. So let's go ahead, space, I'll get back into insert mode. Space user bin uptime. Now notice I didn't have to supply the actual username here. When we're in this user specific cron tabs, we don't define a user. Because this will run actually under the user that we specified. So user bin uptime, and let's just do some append redirection as well. Put that into the root directory, and I'll do uptime dot root dot txt. That way we know it's a user specific one for the root. We're gonna exit, save, and you'll see that it says cron tab installing new cron tab. So now we we'll look at the date. Okay, so our cron tab should run. Let's just go ahead and date in another 40 seconds. Give it a couple seconds. We're going to go ahead and look at our, let's get out of this in the meantime. And let's go back to our var spool cron directory. Spool cron. And you'll notice that it was empty before, but now we actually have a record for root. Since we created a cron tab for root, it actually creates the file for us automatically. And you'll see it's just a, let's just do file on the var spool cron. And then we'll supply root. And you'll see that it's just an ASCII text file. So let's go ahead and just edit through here. var spool cron. So instead of using the utility, you can actually just edit the files directly. And you'll see it just gives us the exact same thing as what our utility supplied. So let's get out of here, check our time. Let's just check here. So you'll see that we actually created a file already, so the cron did run successfully. So if we cat the contents of uptime.root.txt, you'll see that it ran at 7.26 a.m., and which supplied the all the uptime details such as load average and how many users we have logged in. So if we check one more time, let's just make that it, make sure it is running every minute. Give it a second. Four more seconds. And you'll see that we now have now the file is 189 bytes, so let's go ahead and cap the contents of that. And you'll see that it actually worked. We now added another line to our cron file that, uh, that gave us the uptime information as well. Now there's one more thing regarding crons that you would need to know, which is we have two files, cron.allow and cron.deny. Now these two files actually allow you to, to restrict cron access to particular users. So let's go ahead and We'll just go ls etsy cron and let's just etsy everything that starts with a c ls let's do it be a little more specific and you see we have these cron daily files cron hourly cron monthly cron weekly but the two files that we need for cron dot allow and cron dot deny aren't there so on this setup in CentOS 6, it doesn't automatically create the files for you, but it will recognize it if you do create the files yourselves. So let's go ahead into our Etsy directory, and let's say we want it, and let's just create a vi to cron dot allow, and then you would just type root, 
or actually the username that you would want to allow to run crons save it and exit in order for it to allow that specific user and then any user that wants to run crons would have to be on that list in order to run cron tabs you could also deny specific users instead of so instead of supplying the system with a list of users that can run crons you can actually deny whatever user you want so in order to do that you would just create the file vi cron dot deny and then add the username to that list.